Good morning, Cincinnati. Hi. Hi there. Good morning, Cincinnati. <laughs> and thank you and for joining us at Cincy Lifestyle. Boy, we got off to a great start, didn't we? But good morning. Thank you for joining us. And we're so happy to have you here with us on Cincy Lifestyle. Uh, and this is a special morning for a lot of reasons. Uh, number one, this is Mona Morrow's birthday. Happy Yay! birthday, Mona. Yay. We, we, we laid out a, a uh, we spared no cost in laying out a floral display for you here, which you can, which you'll be able to see. Look at that. Look at that. PK, the director, spent all morning oh, rounding this that up. Is Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes. I'm really enjoying my birthday morning so far. What's it feel like to be 39 again? <clears throat> well, you know, it feels fantastic. It feels like I'm over 60. In fact, a couple years over 60 today, but um, 39, it is. Okay. All right. Just trying to get you off the hook there, Mona, but okay, sure. <laughs> I'll you take know, it. You know, I, I did a little uh, homework just on some of the people you share this birthday with. So you and the other folks in town who are celebrating today share the birthday with Jim Garner, the actor, the late actor who was on the Rockford Files. You yeah. share it with California governor, former governor Jerry Brown. You share it with director Francis Ford Coppola, uh, who made a movie of my life. It was titled Apocalypse Now uh, because <laughs> yes, love that. I know, right? Uh, as corny as you are, Mona, you'll be happy to know you also share the day with W.K. <laughs> Kellogg, who founded the Cereal Company. <laughs> and because you're so smooth, this is also Billy D. Williams' birthday. Woo! Really? Mm -hmm. Man, we mm -hmm. should have been together on our birth. Well, at least um, wow. back in the past. I've seen him lately, and, you know, maybe not so much. But, you know what? I have a lot <laughs> of to do today. <laughs> I got my absentee ballot, so I'm going to be voting today. All right. And I have a little shaker here. You know, I'm going to take a walk a little bit later. Okay, you got it. All right, dull, dull, dull birthday. So what I need <laughs> is your help. I need your help. Please send me on Facebook to, to our Cincy Lifestyle page on Facebook your ideas on how I can celebrate my quarantine birthday. I really appreciate it. If you've got ideas or if you had to celebrate a quarantine birthday, let me know what you did. Send me photos, and I'll be happy to take all suggestions today. All right. That sounds like really a good plan. And I hope, folks, that you uh, check us out on Facebook at Cincy Lifestyle, Cincy Lifestyle Style at Facebook.com. Uh, so w she talked about us being socially distant. That's uh, the big thing for us right now as we battle COVID-19. Uh, we're looking for the humor in that as always. So we found a couple of things we think you might like. First of all, a sign uh, from a certain filling station here in town that says tip of the day, uh, wear your Bengals jersey and you <laughs> won't catch anything. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that, that you know, so take that. I still love my bingos, but yeah, that's really funny. That is funny. That is funny. Uh, also, we've got Allie Martin sent us um, some exercise that you can do if you have the right equipment while you're on lockdown. So let's take a look at that video. Yes. <laughs> Allie doing doggy curls. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, and Allie's oh, with us by great. Skype right now. What were you thinking, Allie? This is a time when we're cooped up. We still need to walk. We still need to exercise. What better than a little puppy if you have hanging around? It's about five pounds, fits right in your palm. A pug, <laughs> a Jack Russell mix, uh -huh. of some sort of Boston Terrier, they all work. <laughs> we, we have a Shih Tzu at home. Maybe we'll try that. Yeah, I highly recommend it. I mean, honestly, it's just to have fun. You know, we're all kind of cooped up, like I said, and then kind of going crazy. So you might as well uh, make some some light out of the situation. Yeah, we agree. Well, it's good to see you. It's been a while. You too. Happy birthday, Mona. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That's a that's our work daughter. <laughs> as yeah. we call her. And she's just about the right age for two guys our age, right, Mona? Yep, absolutely. She, yes, she could yes, be a little yes. older well, even. Yeah. you know, after talking, <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, well, I, you know, as we keep talking about being cooped up here, let's face it, coffee is an essential mm -hmm. part of our lifestyles. And Coffee Emporium is a home 
Town staple that is not only delivering some of the freshest coffee during these tough times, but also working continually with farmers around the world. And we had a chance to go behind the scenes and check it out. Take a look. Gosh, so you and the crew were so kind and gave us a socially distant behind the scenes look of Coffee Emporium. Now, things have changed a little bit. Paint a picture of what it looks like right now in the front of the house as well as the back of the house. Yeah, so in the front of the house, we are now compliant with uh, all of the local requirements. Uh, we are only allowing five people into our Over the Rhine location at a time and three people into the Hyde Park location at a time. Um, we are running with a very shortened uh, number of hours that you know we were accustomed to and a lot less uh, crew members to, to do the job. Coffee is essential, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you have to yeah. stay open. Uh, talk a little bit about where you guys are sourcing from because you you do all the roasting and everything. Yeah, so Coffee Emporium um, has been roasting their own coffee uh, since the early 2000s. And we buy our coffee from multiple uh, different countries. Most of the relationships that we have with our farmers are directly with those farmers. It's just a nice reminder to know that this is bigger than ourselves, right? It, this is a global impact, um, but you are such a big asset to this community. Um, how are you guys helping just here right now locally? You know, one of the really cool things that we're doing is you can buy a pound of coffee through Amanda Valentine, in which we will go take to the Christ Hospital with a with a specialized note. You know, just seeing their faces light up and, you know, some of the quick feedback that they gave me um, was, you know, just how thankful that, you know, these workers are. They're working extra hours, yeah. you know, they're burning the candle at both ends and, and this uh, caffeine helps them energize and be able to, to, to stay up for all these these uh, long required hours that they're, they're putting in. So so that's one way. We also have uh, a really uh, unique deal with the, the Cincinnati Zoo, which is kind of my baby, uh, our, <laughs> our, our Fiona, Fiona coffee. Yeah, we actually give 20% of all the Fiona sales to the zoo uh, to help. We've been doing that for almost two years, but right now it's it's even more crucial. And I like to ask this question: What you know? What's the one thing that you want people to know about what's happening at Coffee Emporium right now? Well, um, we have allowed you know our staff that wants to uh, stay home to stay home, and we have you know um, been fortunate enough that we have enough people who want to be here and still get those interactions. So I say as, as long as you are, you know, in the area and in need of, of coffee, we would absolutely love to see you. And, you know, once we're able to uh, to start hugging and, and fist bumping again, <laughs> you can bet that we are going to be do doing that and, and just know that, you know, we're, we're here uh, because we want to help fuel you. And, and uh, it's just important to, to us to be here as it is uh, for, for you. I love it. Again, it's essential. Wait. Can, we're gonna sign off with a virtual fist bump, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Josh, I appreciate it. Allie, it's virtual great, fist bump. great oh. talking to you. <laughs> you too, it's always, always a pleasure. Oh, that was great. That was. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, it was, Allie. It was really a joy to go and, and chat with them. And, and I always like to reiterate time and time again, whenever we're out you know, shooting some of these smaller pieces, we are being very safe. Um, we are pre-planning this six feet apart, socially distant. Um, but it was cool to see some of the behind the scenes and how that they've kind of changed and altered and adapted their business day to day and and really shows us we could still have a really great cup of coffee. You just have to purchase it online or maybe go pick it up and have a really great pour over is what I would recommend. You know, I'm not sure Allie can hear me, but Clyde, ask her what her favorite coffee is. Allie, I don't know if uh, I don't know if you. Oh, I got that. What's oh, you my got favorite that. Coffee. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So first and foremost, um, I love a lot of different coffee shops around in Cincinnati, but Coffee Emporium by far I think is my favorite because again they roast it in their shop and their Guatemala. I mentioned this before. Their beans from Guatemala that they work with with a woman by the name of Olga. Um, she ships those over and they use that bean as their base. Mm for the majority of their roasts and even some of their flavored roasts. 
Um, so their hazelnut is my number one and their winter solstice. It is so good. It's a little bit of hint of sweetness, um, but not too bitter. And you don't need any added sugar or cream or anything. So it's pretty awesome. Mm. All Great right. job. All right, Allie, thanks a bunch. Sorry I didn't bring you back, Annie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Virtual fist bump. <laughs> Historian Jacques Barzun once said, whoever wants to know the heart and mind of America had better learn baseball, and there's still so much to uncover about this sport, including information about the Negro Leagues from the late 1800s. But recently, the Louisville Slugger Museum uncovered a couple of pictures that had historians very excited. Now to tell us more about them, I want to welcome Bailey Mazik, a curatorial specialist at the Louisville Slugger Museum. Bailey, thank you for joining us. So tell us how you got these two pictures in the first place. Yeah, so they were up for auction, um, an online auction through Hunt Auctions. And um, the description on the lot said, uh, possibly or probably 1931 Negro Leagues Louisville White Sox team. And so uh, we saw them, and we are trying to piece together as much of global baseball history as we can. And so we saw this, and we're like, oh, this sounds like it would be a great addition. So we bought them, and uh, when they came in, I started processing them and really examining what was going on in the photographs, and the pieces weren't really adding up to what the original description said. So what was the first clue that these pieces weren't adding up and that these photos might actually be of a different league? So the first thing that really tipped me off was um, on their uniforms, it says LU. And I said, no, I, I don't think that matches with White Sox. I would think it would say like WS. So that was like the first big clue. These photos are from 1908. And uh, this team wasn't yet part of a formal league. Um, they were really trying to get that initiative going, um, like a Negro Leagues, you know, organization. Um, but they were just playing on their own outside of that while they were trying to organize. Now, you said you were still looking into these photos. What are some questions you'd like to have answered? Yeah, so um, I would like to go to other archives um, to really see how um, they were covered in other cities that they played, learn more about their opponents, um, and then I would love to track down names of individual players and see uh, what we can learn about individuals. And before you get away, how can people get more information about your research or see these pictures at the Louisville Slugger Museum? So I wrote a blog piece about my research and about the Louisville Unions team, and that is on our website at sluggermuseum.com. And then um, the display about the Louisville Unions is um, available in our gallery and our museum um, running through August, the first week of September. All right, Bailey, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Well, coming up here on Cincy Lifestyle, have you, have you revamped your budget lately? Well, you might want to. We get some financial tips for furloughs and laid off workers. Plus, advice for those of you who want to hear this. So, uh, as Mona was saying, for to retire, you might want to listen in. Plus, if you could increase the value of your home, would you do it? That's what adding an egress window does. We'll tell you more about what that is and some other reasons it might be a good idea. All that and a whole lot more just a couple of minutes away. Welcome back. You know, while we may be in uncertain times right now, we do want to help you get control of at least one thing, your money. And to tell us more about how to do that, I want to welcome Al Riddick, the president of Game Time Budgeting, and a pretty mean guy with a pool cue, too. Al, thanks for talking to us. Hey, thank you for allowing me to be back, Clyde. It's good to see you again, sir. Glad to have you. So let's, let's dive right in and talk about the first one or two things people ought to be doing if they've been furloughed or laid off. Yes, sir. The first thing I advise people to do is to not panic. I know everything within your being is putting you in a panic mode. However, when you panic, 
and make financial decisions, you usually create a cascade of negative events. So I always recommend to people to use more logic uh, than emotion. Obviously, when you do uh, experience a furlough or uh, become laid off, you have to create your crisis management plan. So for that, you have to develop a new budget by which to live your new financial life. And in conjunction with that, you have to prioritize some of your needs now. Obviously, the two most important being food as well as shelter. And uh, when you're thinking about shelter, please remember to make sure that you not only pay your rent, pay your mortgage, make sure that you keep up with your renter's insurance and mortgage insurance as well. And last but not least, if you foresee that you are headed towards a financial wall, so to speak, go ahead and be proactive and reach out to your various creditors to discuss any type of financial hardship options that may be available to you as a consumer. All right, some good ideas. Now, I know some folks who are thinking about retiring this year, uh, but they've either been furloughed or laid off. So what about tips for them? Yes, sir. If you are experiencing a furlough or have been laid off, uh, please remember that you have to reduce, if not eliminate, uh, a lot of the wants that may have existed in your budget. And you do have to create a new budget now based on your new normal. When you go through a uh, life-changing event, such as a layoff or a uh, furlough, um, you obviously will be dealing with less money at your disposal. So if retirement was a part of your long-term plan, uh, make Make sure that you look at how much uh, cash you do have available right now. Believe it or not, there are some individuals who, if you've been planning correctly for retirement, you may actually still be able to do that. However, I would suggest that you at least meet with two financial advisors, advisors before actually uh, pulling the trigger to uh, enjoy your retirement life. All right, Al, just a little bit of time left. What about changing behaviors in this situation? What should people be thinking of in, in, De definitely. in that so regard? Definitely. Your behaviors are concerned. You do have to not only create a budget, but then track your progress where that budget is concerned as well. Uh, I'd say definitely reduce the temptation or resist the temptation to use credit cards. That is some very expensive money. And if you engage in that behavior, you could actually put yourself in a worse position than you are in right now. And definitely understanding your credit score as well as the fact that it may take a hit if you aren't able to keep up with your payments right now. But trust me, um, it's better to make sure that you have food on your table and a roof over your head versus being so concerned right now about a credit score because if it does take a hit, you can at least put yourself in a position later on to build that three-digit number back up. All right. And right quick, uh, how do people reach you or find more information? Uh, yes, people can visit us online at GameTimeBudgeting.com or call 513-813-3275. All right, Al. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Well, there are small changes you can make to your home that add tremendous value. One of those being the installation of an egress window. Well, Ali spoke with Jayco Waterproofing to learn more about them and how they can install one in your home. Take a look. Today we're installing an egress window. An egress window is a window that is required in specific locations of a home and provides emergency means of exit. Safety codes require egress windows in bedrooms or habitable spaces in a basement. For example, if there's a fire in the building or the uh, house, you can easily escape the fire by going through an egress window. We also have a clear plastic cover that we can uh, install on top of the window well. Both of those provide some safety. So if you have a child nearby playing or you know exercising outside or throwing the football, they don't fall down into the hole. Also, the uh, clear cover also provides a little bit of style. It, uh, you can see through it. You, you still get that daylight that you want uh, through the window, and it still protects and gives you that safety aspect. In addition to safety, egress windows provide a tremendous amount of natural light, transforming a dark, dreary space to an open and inviting living area. You can open the window, you get more fresh air, you feel less cooped, as well as it reduces on mold and mildew. Yes, ventilation is also a key factor. Basements tend to have very little space for windows, so single egress windows can provide adequate airflow, which in turn can prevent respiratory issues or trigger allergies. And just because it can't be seen from the curb doesn't mean it shouldn't have style. 
There's a couple different types of egress windows that we install. There's single hung, encasement windows, and slide windows. They're all UV stable, so they rust less. Installing an egress window provides daylight, ventilation, style, and safety. At the end of the day, it's an increase in value of your home. If you'd like to learn more about egress windows or Jayco waterproofing, visit jacowaterproofing.com or call them at any of the listed numbers below, depending on your location. We'll be right back. Quick look outside, warmer temperatures today, but we may be in for some bumpy weather as the day wears on. Now coming up tomorrow here on Cincy Lifestyle, what do you get when you combine thin paint and heavy water? You get incredible works of wearable art. We'll introduce you to the woman behind these hand dipped scarves and we'll tell you how you can help create your very own. Mona, happy birthday. Once Thank again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Clyde. I'm, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the ideas that people are going to send to our Facebook page so I know how to spend the rest of my day. Well, your flowers and, smell lovely. <laughs> and that's Cincy Lifestyle for Tuesday, April 7th. Yay! And we love hearing from you so much. Thank you so much for all you did. Thank you. Thanks for watching our video, and if you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before, or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, we love to say it, make it a great day.